ओके ओके सर हाय सतीश सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मोहन सर गुड मॉर्निंग सतीश सर टुगेदर सर डक्टर आफ क्रिटिकल के critical care fellowship from apollo hospital and uh, after that he did uh, isb also uh, today's topic is uh, weaning failure in uh, neuromuscular uh, weakness uh, disorders it is a retro retrospective study i think he did uh, in uh, in his hospital uh, i think i hope that he will enlight uh, new things uh, what kind of difficulties will face when weaning a neuromuscular uh, disorders or to satish yes sir ipra na director of secondary bed sir critical care and good sir adhe sir apollo hospital kada Sir, any new achievements, Satish Garu? He has completed ISB. He has been. He is a medical superintendent of the Apollo Secondary Bed, and he is a ISCC executive member. And he is uh, uh, some recently uh, got two awards. So many things are there, sir. He has. He is model. He doesn't want to show us. Think better to next time onwards. Uh, we'll tell Neelu for to collect uh, all CV data, sir. Oh, sure, sir. Thank Eminent you. Eminent speakers uh, like you and Jakina, uh, Satish, everyone, so that uh, we can tell before the topic. So it is a one kind of encouragement to the youngsters. सतीश गार अनमूट सतीश सर विन सतीश सतीश सर विन अडजस्टर सर आना Yeah, yeah. Slide share. Slide share. I'm sharing, sir, already. Ah, can you put the slide? Can you put it on the? Can you full screen? Better than the? No, no, no. I'm not doing. Yeah. Is it okay now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting case. We came across. Uh, I just follow the case presentation as per the timing and presentation. Uh, maybe the diagnosis is easy if you know completely about the case but as per the timing wise initially how we presented initially what we thought and then how we turned into a different direction all these things i just want to depict now so a uh, on 26th of november a 15 year so year old male came to our hospital from another hospital in an ambulance brought in an unconscious state who we experienced a cardiac arrest in the emergency on that patient so immediately cpr done cpr for two cycles and simultaneously intubated rose achieved and uh, we have done because we don't have a diagnosis abg is showing post cardiac arrest status 
so hypoxemia hypercarbia mild metabolic acidosis so we don't have a clue so immediately uh, we have a brief history and we send the patient for ct and mri to rule out intra parenchymal injury intracranial issues so going back to what has happened in the last two days of three days so recently this patient is being admitted in kims hospital and he was there for five days and found that patient was having enstemi sorry stemi and patient hemoglobin was low so they could not do any primary procedure and they conservatively managed the patient and they actually given a call uh, patient requires a primary intervention at a later state and discharged in a stable cardiovascular status so on the one day he was okay at home after the discharge from the hospital and the next day patient came to the local hospital in their area with a non specific bizarre neck movements postural changes and behavioral changes so we examined this patient he was having a stiff neck and uh, good muscle power also so they called me i went to that local nursing home and i have seen the patient patient systemic examination hemodynamics oxygenation all these things are stable except patient was like behavioral changes he is talking to me he is obeying me but the postural changes are there bizarre looks and is not able to fix the body in a particular shape and uh, history further gone into and he is an employee a private uh, no, company and is a regular alcohol consumer so provisionally what we thought i because i am the neurologist i am intensive whatever it is at that point of time i suggested that the nursing home owner that uh, it could be alcohol withdrawal with some moment is order of extra pyramidal symptoms some medication something you need to look into and at the same time benefit out out we need to go with an mri brain and c spine and a neurologist involvement should be there i suggested all these things because uh, you know the small and nursing homes they have to shift the patient for mr in the next hour, next day so all these things were planned so next day at about 3 o'clock in the same nursing home i have seen another patient and for some reason and i am just able to hear that something happening in the room next to me and uh, family were uh, screaming and me little bit worried about the patient and i just went into peep into that room and uh, found that this patient is sitting in a chair history says that just 15 minutes back he had enough meal in the lunch and then he went to the bathroom he himself came from the bathroom sat in the chair and uh, after that they found that he is not obeying the commands and is uh, completely unresponsive and no respirate then i rushed into that room i found that this patient is not breathing at all no respiratory attempts and the peripheral pulses are very hardly to felt and it was around 10 to 15 beats per minute the carotid so it's almost like near arrest arrest situation but i'm little bit worried what to do should i start cpr because it is not my area uh, so local small nursing home although so many things like i thought of uh, i am not able to take any decision for first one minute to two minutes what to do in that nursing home so i later on stabilized myself i shifted the patient on to a cot took almost one to two minutes and uh, i have screamed for ambu and atropine but unfortunately i could not get those two things and they have only oxygen concentrator with 5 liters uh, capacity and uh, a simple mask so i started uh, I've, i just discussed with the family for a half a minute or something like immediately started cpr and compressions only compressions given for 2 to 3 minutes so pulse regained and saturation was uh, we were able to pick up the pulse and saturation was showing 55% with 5 liters of oxygen and slowly improved by the time uh, everything is seems to be settling they could able to bring uh, vein circuit with oxygen cylinder with uh, positive pressure ventilation with mask saturation went up to 90% and heart rate stabilized and bp is also stable at that point of time so in the meantime nursing home owner came and he was uh, safe came he wanted to shift the patient to higher center ambulance is ready patient is being shifted to uh, apollo was a hospital of their choice and they wanted to come to my hospital so they came to apollo so now again coming back say 15 years year old male shifted from another hospital brought in unconscious state cardiac arrest received at the time of into the er cpr and intubation done two cycles rose achieved ct mri done unremarkable and patient is having myoclonic jerks on ventilatory support okay so the provisional diagnosis is 
హైపోక్సిక్ ఇష్కెమిక్ ఎన్సెఫలోపతి పోస్ట్ కార్డియక్ డిస్టర్బెన్స్ సార్ ఒక క్వశ్చన్ సారీ ఫర్ ఇంటర్రప్షన్ సార్ సార్ ప్లీజ్ సార్ అది చేసే ముందు ఇంటిమేట్ చేయలే సార్ ఈ పేషెంట్ ని ఎక్కడండి అక్కడ నర్సింగ్ హోమ్ లో సార్ అంబు ఎట్రోపిన్ కూడా లేదు సార్ అక్కడ ఓకే 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 రైట్ ఐ టోల్డ్ నో ఐ యామ్ లిటిల్ బిట్ వరీడ్ వాట్ టు డూ దేర్ ఫర్ 1 టు 2 మినిట్స్ ఐ వాస్ ఇన్ అ షాక్ ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ సో నర్సింగ్ హోమ్ ఓనర్ వాంట్స్ టు వాష్ హిస్ హ్యాండ్స్ అండ్ ఇమిడియట్లీ అంబులెన్స్ ఇస్ రెడీ పేషెంట్ ఇస్ స్టేబుల్ నౌ యు కెన్ గో టు ఎనీ బిగ్గర్ హాస్పిటల్ సో దట్ హి ఇస్ సేఫ్ దేర్ సార్ ఈ అంబులెన్స్ అంబులెన్సెస్ లో ఈ ఉండవా సార్ అంటే లైక్ బై నేమ్ సార్ ఫర్ ఎ నేమ్ సేక్ ఇట్స్ అన్ అంబులెన్స్ సార్ ఇట్స్ ఓన్లీ మార్తి వ్యాన్ ఓకే సార్ రైట్ సార్ దిస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద సెట్ బ్యాక్స్ ఆఫ్ దట్ హాస్పిటల్ ఐ కాంట్ హెల్ప్ ఇట్ ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ ఓకే సార్ ప్లీజ్ సో ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ హిస్ ఐడియా ఇస్ టు వాంట్ టు గెట్ రిడ్ ఆఫ్ దట్ పేషెంట్ యాజ్ ఎర్లీ యాజ్ పాసిబుల్ సార్ సో ప్రొవిజనల్ డయాగ్నోసిస్ ఇస్ హైపోక్సిక్ ఇష్కెమిక్ ఎన్సెఫలోపతి and who has instituted uh, targeted uh, temperature monitoring and uh, relaxant given uh, for the sake of myoclonic jets and uh, we have given enough uh, anti epileptics uh, including uh, lorazepam and all those so we knocked out the patient 24 to 40 around with the frame of 24 to 36 hours we found that everything is stable we could come down of uh, ventilatory support to 40% of fio2 basic peep up 6 and everything seems to be settling so we started rewarming the patients slow rewarming given patient uh, gcs is uh, slowly came up after another 6 to 10 hours after the completion of uh, rewarming so we have uh, patient uh, myoclonic jets uh, frequency has also come down and we have repeated an mri after the 72 hours so 29th so there is no evidence of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy as per the our radiologist but they found that there is a choroid plexus granuloma seen but there is no bleed or something like so ventilation is uh, reasonably optimized 40% of fao2 and hemodynamics are stable and uh, other vitals and other uh, parameters are stable good urine output started an rt feeds so on 29th we thought of like everything seems to be stable so why can't we extubate this patient so we are given svt trial a pressure support 8 and peep of 8 with 40% and patient is not uh, producing enough tidal volumes rate is like going above 40 and tidal volumes are less than 200 so to achieve a tidal volume of around 20 patient was requiring a pressure support of 18 plus so we uh, aborted that uh, SVT trial and uh, we kept him back on assist control mode so then we just want to evaluate why there is a problem like what's happening why the patient is not coming out of uh, ventilatory support so 2d echo is uh, normal uh, there is no drop in significant drop in the ejection fraction and uh, there was significant muscle weakness despite we have stopped relaxant more than 48 hours uh, tr- uh, found that his hemoglobin was low so maybe hypoxemia oxygen content might be less all these things we thought and we gave one transfusion at hemoglobin of 8 uh second day again on the 30th second repeat trial svt also failed and whenever we are putting the patient on pressure support patient is within 5 to 10 minutes is becoming unresponsive a significant desaturation bradycardia everything is seems to be like a completely a havoc situation so blood gases is showing carbon dioxide retention hypoxemia was there improving uh, and once we start him putting him on uh, assist control mode within 5 10 minutes again he is coming back to his uh, baseline is conscious obeying commands so this was the scenario two three times happened was sbt given patient within 10 15 minutes becoming a uh, desaturation unresponsive brady and once given a positive pressure ventilation is becoming stable so easily correctable problems so looking at this we thought of it is difficult weaning and so maybe is 26 to first means it is already 7 days so we have given an elective tricuspid on this patient and post tricuspid we have done found that one side left left uh, lung is completely white out uh, so we thought of that is there is a mucus plug and we have given a uh, left side up position and physiotherapy and uh, within 24 hours x ray got improved so air entry was stable so all those things are settling down on second we found that uh, there is some improvement in the distal muscle power he is able to move his fingers is able to flex his arm and both lower limbs are power is 4 by 5 and 5 almost 4 by 5 to 5 by 5 but there is significant weakness in the shoulder muscles weakness is very very significant is not able to uh, lift his arm 
so we thought it is now it is again critical illness polling neuropathy established in because five days ventilation post cardiac arrest status so, so uh, we were like uh, what else we can do we continued the therapy all uh, neuro support to care given and at that point we gave a narrow condition study and uh, it's reported as asymmetrical motor sensory demyelination and axonal neuropathy both upper limbs and lower limbs um, then the diagnosis is slowly like we need to have a differential diagnosis like it could be gbs it could be like uh, any other uh, neuromuscular disorders or peripheral neuropathy neurological disorders which is uh, a pattern of lower motor neuron paralysis like thing because uh, brain mri is normal c spine is normal so something related to either it is in the uh, peripheral neuromuscular disorder so we thought of it is either gbs or myasthenia gravis so whatever it is we start we gave an option to the family ivig therapy with either plasma persis or ivig and uh, family were not in a position to accept all these things so they were uh, did not come back with us uh, with any consent of this because both the treatments are costly they have a financial issue so we did not get a clearance for these two therapies so we continued the same therapy for two days in between we worked up in a different uh, what are the investigations that are required to delineate the diagnosis so from third to fourth we have evaluated further family are not willing for ivig in the meantime we sent acetylcholine receptor binding antibodies continued other support to care uh, patient continued to be stable hemodynamically oxygenation as long as he is an acmv he is comfortable tolerating psp intermittently with high pressure support of 16 few hours during day time so daily we have given a trial but uh, it's not been extended success trial Uh, in the meantime, like a routine critical care uh, setbacks, like pa patient has uh, one episode of mild fever, so we sent uh, pan cultures, ET secretions, grew MDR, acetobacter, but patient otherwise clinically stable, so we haven't targeted our antibiotics to the cultures. We continued the baseline uh, antibiotic like subsalbactam. So though it is sensitive to only colistin and uh, PG cyclin, we haven't started that antibiotic. And uh, CT chest done. Uh, there is no evidence of any um, like space occupying lesion in the area of thigh, thigh moma or like any lung malignancy. Uh, fifth to ninth, so patient slowly uh, like family con got convinced to start an IVIG. We started IVIG, 30 grams per day for five days. Uh, intermittent weaning trials given. Acetylcholine receptor antibody came positive. Normally it shouldn't be more than one. It is eight plus, and which is suggestive of myasthenia like syndromes. And we have started him on pyridostigmine. Started on uh, is it thaja thayoprim after the last dose of IVIG. We completed five doses. Then we continued to give the immunosuppressive therapy in the form of thaja thayoprim. But later, uh, the when the whole team were uh, uh, convinced to stop is it thaja uh, thayoprim and start on uh, steroids, milder dose of steroids. So we continued pyridostigmine. Continued prednisolone 10 milligrams BD. And patient slowly muscle power, proximal muscle power uh, regained. And he was tolerating TPS trial for few hours during daytime. From eleventh, so till that it is like okay. Ninth, tenth, he was stable. We are giving the TPS trials, and we are continuing pyridostigmine and steroid oral steroids. The then patient developed melina. Again, there was a drop in the hemoglobin. Started on pan infusion. So took the help of a gastroenterologist and we had done endoscopy. Endoscopy is showing. Uh, A polypoid mass lesion about two centimeters, so uh, uh, like all the three length, breadth, uh, two into two into two. Polypoid mass in the lesser curvature extending to the upper pylorus, and this mass is friable, and uh, bleeds on touch. So biopsy taken and a strong suspicion of it is uh, malignant polyp. Uh, because hemoglobin was uh, low, we have given him a blood transfusion, and we have sent. Uh, Voltage gated calcium channel or antibody uh, sent report awaited. So conclusion wise, so patient post cardiac arrest came to our hospital. Initially difficulty in weaning, though he received good neurological recovery, but uh, peripheral neuromuscular weakness was there. Not able to wean him off. Uh, we have differential diagnosis between Guillain Barré syndrome, myasthenia gravis, critical illness, polling neuropathy. So then we found that there is a melina. Uh, we started him on IVIG. Then Melina happened. Melina maybe because of uh, we thought it is because of steroid induced. 
but we have done an endoscopy. Endoscopy showed a malignant, likely to be malignant poly morphologically. Sent a biopsy, waiting for the biopsy report, and also we are. Uh, so what is that? On antibodies positive, to estrogen receptor antibody positive, to suggest of more towards uh, myasthenia-like syndrome. Then uh, we have sent BGCC antibody that is voltage-gated calcium channel antibodies. If it is positive, we can put the diagnosis of it is Lambert-Eaton syndrome. Uh, so we found that there is a drop in hemoglobin. So joining all these things, initially when the patient was in Kims, there there is just a drop in the hemoglobin. The drop in the hemoglobin, they found that there is an MI, and MI is being medically treated. No intervention done because of patient was unstable uh, hemoglobin. And now we found that there is a polyp. This polyp is the reason for the drop in the hemoglobin because he was bleeding at that time. And this polyp is maybe malignant. It is a paraneoplastic syndrome. It is releasing some antibodies. And that antibody is actually hitting the neuromuscular junction and the patient is now in muscle weakness. So this is what we are understood. Uh, so now it is uh, coming back to our uh, differential diagnosis. We found that there is a weakness in the proximal muscles. We found that there is a weakness in the diaphragm. So whenever the patient is kept on pressure support, patient is not able to generate enough tidal volumes. There is definitely a problem in the high oxygenation and also CO2 retention. So we found that there is a significant diaphragmatic weakness. So we are not able to, because these tests, most of the tests are being done in a non-intubated patient, but we haven't, uh, we could not do any test that is related to uh, specific uh, diaphragm stimulation tests, these things we could not do. Then weaning criteria wise, we found that everything is stable. So we tried this as per this criteria like um, vital capacities, all those things in the, um, we don't have a spirometry uh, with endotracheal tube here. So those things we did not, we only go with that muscle power, distal muscle powers and uh, we failed somehow. So we went to tracheostomy. Bad slide. So the differential diagnosis at this point thought into our brain is it can be isolated diaphragmatic paralysis, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, myasthenic crisis, myotonic dystrophy, spinal muscular atrophy, and multiple. So in this, we ruled out all um, majority things except Guillain-Barre and myasthenic crisis. So the exclusion for Guillain-Barre syndrome, this is one slide I want to show you. Any weakness which is progressive in a very shorter period, that is less than 24 hours, or it is progressing even after four weeks, is less likely to have a GBS. GBS will be between day three to day four, seven, 28. So it's like between less than one day, everything is now like worsening of the overall symptoms, or still the symptoms are worsening even after one month, it can't be GBS. And sensory loss, one thing you like, uh, you have to identify that any spinal cord uh, in involvement. All this. Next is asymmetric weaknesses. GBS is more of a symmetrical weakness. Bowel and bladder dysfunction at the onset that becomes severe and persistent is less likely GBS. And pulmonary dysfunction with limb and no limb weakness at the onset, with little or no limb weakness at the onset, that is also against to the GBS. Sensory signs that are isolated with no weakness at the onset, fever, CSF, leukocytosis. So these are all the things goes against to the GBS diagnosis. And there is a, what we thought in the initially it is vitamin B deficiency because of uh, alcohol uh, uh, consumption. So thiamine deficiency from nutrition deficiency or chronic alcohol use typically presents with a symmetrical distal motor and sensory polyneuropathy, but we have a proximal motor uh, and uh, neuropathy. So that is against to our patient diagnosis. Then coming to the myasthenia gravis. In that, we thought of like, we don't have any specific region to have, but we found that there is a polyp and now it is looking like a um, lambert eaton uh, myasthenic syndrome. So it's a slowly progressive proximal muscle weakness, which we have this uh, with our patient. Uh, pattern suggests of myopathy rather than neuromuscular junction disorders. So we need to further, maybe we require a muscle biopsy. Proximal lower extremity weakness, yeah. Uh, patient thigh muscles are not active. Uh, autonomic findings are less likely, but we found that this patient is having a retrospectively 
we have identified this patient is also having a ptosis. Initially, we were not uh, keen enough, but later we found that patient is also was also having ptosis. So that ends about my case. Any open for discussion now? I think it's half an hour. Good. Thank you, Shatish. Uh, nice, interesting case. Uh, regarding the narrow conduction studies, so uh, narrow conduction studies has shown both uh, uh, decreased amplitude and increased latency. I hope because you mentioned both demyelinating and uh, uh, sir. Uh, neuropathy also. Sir, so it is not uh, specifically uh, like any specific, uh, there is, uh, I'll just read it out, sir. It's there in my hand. Just give me one minute. Yeah, yeah, it showed a mixed picture, Satish, sir. It sir, showed sir, a demyelinating and axonal type of neuropathy, predominantly in lower limbs. But that was not consistent with his uh, amount of weakness he had. Sir. He had almost proximal muscle weakness, 0 by 5, and neck muscle. In this patient, the predominant picture that we should understand is having a gross neck muscle weakness. Yeah. That is a predominant presentation, more than GPS, uh, suggestive of a neuromuscular junction disorder like myasthenia. So, good morning, team. The, the uh, Dr. Venkatred is online. He's supporting me regarding this patient. He's a prominent neurologist of Hyderabad. I requested him to join because he's treating this patient. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Venkatred, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Sir, any important thing is Venkatred sir wants to inform us it will be useful to all the hospitals and ourselves. Yeah, actually this patient when Satish had told me uh, when he came to us uh, in CPR status, we didn't know what uh, caused that uh, initially Satish had told me he has got some bizarre neck muscle uh, mo neck movements but he was conscious. Then he went to bradycardia and hypoxia arrest. Uh, first five days we were clueless because of uh, his GCS was low and he had uh, even jerks post CPR. <clears throat> After stabilizing once, uh, weaning off the ventilator, uh, when he became conscious, then we could assess his muscle weakness. There he had a profound neck muscle weakness compared to the limb extremities. There we thought uh, probably an MJ disorder. Then we sent uh, estelcolin receptor antibodies and uh, uh, awaiting the report, we convinced the family, even that they took one to two days. Uh, then we went with uh, IVIG. They, later, the acetylcholine receptor antibodies came positive. See, this happens oh, only with neuromuscular junction disorders, uh, GBs. Uh, they come out of CPR very well without any neurological deficits because they, they give us some time when there is a hypercapnia and a hypoxia. So that's how. But uh, later... Oh, sorry, sir. Later on workup, later on workup uh, of anemia, we found uh, <clears throat> likely to be a CA stomach, but uh, Lambert and myasthenic syndrome more most commonly associated with small cell lung cancers very unlikely to be uh, carcinoma stomach. If you found this VGCC antibodies positive, it will be a very rare uh, case report. But the line of the treatment will be same uh, for myasthenia and Lambert Only in the diagnostic approach there will be a little bit difficulty. Uh, otherwise, the line of treatment is same like IVIG or plasma exchange. We have given IVIG followed by azathioprine and steroids. These patients will take uh, weeks or months because he is having profound neck muscle weakness, weeks or months from meaning of the ventilator. That is a difficulty in corporate setting to convince the patients. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, I am Dr. Srinivas. So, did we do a MRI of uh, C-spine, sir? Yes, we have done yeah. it. Okay. So, a patient, we are uh, inconclusive uh, for a patient who is having a, a nerve conduction studies. So, this how many days it will take, sir, these enzyme levels to come? 
it will take uh, another two to three months, sir, because immunosuppressive treatment should no, act as a therapy. No, no, no. Uh, these um, choline levels you have done, no? Still choline levels and all these things. Uh, ter- uh, means uh, lab report to come. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, yes. Minimum four days, sir. Minimum four to okay. five days. So when do you do a nerve muscle biopsy in this such type of patients? In this patient, uh, there was no requirement of uh, muscle biopsy, sir, because his reflexes was preserved except ankle. And we have mm. not suspected any myopathy because CPK was normal. Mm. There was no tenderness. And uh, it was very uh, <clears throat> it was very soon for a conclusion of a critical illness myoneuropathy also. So it was typically looking like a neuromuscular junction disorder or a variant of guillain barre syndrome. So in these two, we don't do generally muscle biopsies. Muscle biopsies we do if we suspect only myositis or a myopathy. Both, both narrow muscle biopsy, both. Because we also had a similar patient uh, like a young patient, software engineer. So she has become suddenly unresponsive. Uh, and uh, then this is almost uh, three years back, uh, unresponsive. And whenever we uh, do, a, uh, I think patient got intubated. Initially patient was treated in a small nursing home, but the uh, one hospital like Pranam hospital patient was treated. So this patient, uh, PCO2, uh, so they labeled as a acute uh, exacerbation of asthma and shifted because, and discharged the patient. They put on NIV, the patient did not tolerate, then they intubated and they put on acute exacerbation of asthma and then they discharged the patient on oxygen. Why? Because the, the PCO2 is high. They did not evaluate completely. The PCO2 of a young patient who is 30-year-old female She's having uh, 90, 100 like that. Then this patient uh, again came with uh, breathing difficulty, unresponsiveness to us. Then we intubated and after intubation, the patient is, uh, PCO2 is normal. Before intubation is 90, 100. Then we start of uh, evaluating it. So this patient, uh, uh, nerve, nerve conduction studies were inconclusive as mentioned by the ASWAN. Finally, we have done a now and even CPK is normal and we evaluated completely process. No muscle biopsy uh, we have done and they found to be is a uh, GBS. It's a, one of the variant of GBS they told us and patient anyway. Sir, for, uh, GBS, we don't do narrow biopsy or muscle biopsy, sir. It's a clinical and electrophysiological or uh-huh. CSF study, sir. If yeah. muscle biopsy is indicated only for muscular dystrophies, no, 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 sir. They have done nerve also, sir. Nerve and muscle, both. Uh. Yeah, but because they could probably, because nerve biopsy we do for a neuropathy, which we can't evaluate in the <clears throat> nerve conduction studies or systemic vasculitis, or like mm-hmm. vasculitic neuropathies, some mm-hmm. demyelinating neuropathies, which are very rare, myeloma, poems, all those. Mm-hmm. But muscle biopsy, for GBS generally, we don't do Muscle biopsy or no conduction? Are they? No biopsy, sir. It's no, not they are also either. inconclusive, sir. Like uh, uh, done a lot of uh, um, uh, levels, enzyme levels and all these things. And they finally, we discussed this case long back. And they found so that... What happened to the patient later, sir? Patient improved. The patient was put on same similarly immunosuppressive agents and then... Patient recovered and uh, they, they, because sir, they first thing the thing we should remember is in GB syndrome, electro diagnosis, now conduction studies may be normal, sir, initial four or five days. Yeah. Initially, yes. only FP persistence will be absent or that may be also normal. So initially, hmm. through NCS, patient having clinical symptoms, uh, we should treat clinically, sir. Yes, sir. This patient is uh, treated because GBS is a clinical diagnosis. Yes, so, yes. So, now conduction so, study is normal, but in GBS, no indication of nerve biopsy or muscle biopsy, sir. Biopsy is... What happened, sir? We don't have a conclusion. Conclusive yeah, evidence. Sir, but, sir, sir, they, they, so, they, in our patient, what I am telling mm-hmm. is, we, we had a diagnosis that antibodies are strongly positive. They are 100 times mm-hmm. elevated. Mm-hmm. 0.25, more than 0.25 is positive. We had eight in this patient. So strong positive. Mm. And clinically, the picture is same. Mm. 
so there was no indication of muscle or nerve perhaps in this patient okay, okay sir thank yeah. you sir sir i have few concerns in this patient one thing is when i managed this patient in the outside hospital there is no respiratory support given even though it is a respiratory arrest i have done only compressions only cpr for two cycles or two minutes but uh, patient achieved rose this is one point need to be highlighted though it's a respiratory arrest patient was not breathing and that led to the arrest but uh, i don't have any means to tackle his respiratory system no oxygenation i could not do mouth to mouth respiration in this patient so i just gave only chest compressions in patient achieved rose so one point uh, is like only chest compression there is separate entity you no know? only chest compression cpr so that worked here and uh, nice. despite two three rs patient did not have hie so sir, we, patient, sir. patient did not have hie means that is a good uh, quality of cpr i can say um, sir what quality were given sir nothing <laughs> Ah, whatever is in your hand, you are given quality service, sir. Mm -hmm. So quality is there uh, because that uh, we see patients with the uh, after thirty minutes of CPR, good quality CPR, patients will not have a HIE, and a few patients uh, uh, will have a HIE even with the two minutes of CPR also. That uh, again depends on the, the pre-arrest condition and multiple factors. Okay. Satish, uh, sir, uh, sir, 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 one thing Dr. Venkatesh has mentioned that uh, some regarding this uh, HIE chances are less uh, in this type of patients. He mentioned. We tend to see, sir, this uh, myasthenia gravis patient, especially uh, mm. during my residency days. Uh, they mm. have frequent arrests, but uh, they recover very well from the CPR, and they don't have HIV status. This HIV um, mm. hypoxic status. So probably um, that uh, building of the carbon dioxide, uh, shallowing of breathing. Once we achieve this uh, <coughs> cardiac cycle, and uh, later also if we do AMBO and connective ventilator, probably they save. We don't know, but uh, it's a clinical observation, sir. No scientific this. Uh, Okay, sir. Well, actually, the PCOD is more dangerous, sir, in the to the brain. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, but uh, okay, sir. Good observation. On, sir, asking something. So nothing, uh, because if, as you said rightly, uh, the calls is the one thing which is actually enough to get that little bit of CO2 or PCOD. But CO2 will not go, but only the uh, blood circulation can happen. But when you say that, as you don't have a oxygenation or ambo bag or something when you are compressing even entire lung is also getting compressed negative pressure and positive pressure expansion is happening no maybe maybe i am also doing yes. that respiratory yes no, sir see, yes, for sir. example when you are doing that uh, indirectly in a manual you see when you are doing a compression you have a thoracic pump mechanism you have a cardiac pump mechanism so the both mechanisms there is a 30% of the blood moving up and down The same way here, you are doing that because which is a tennis court size of the lung. Even if you are compressing, that will get compressed and again relax. No, negative mm -hmm. pressure may be would have gone because normally minus four to minus fifteen negative pressure, whatever is it, been good when arrest is happening. Or and you are just pushing it so many again. Maybe I do not know. That's what I am thinking because we have a. I really wanted to know that we have a CPR program in uh, ICCM indoor for four hundred people. So. With the mannequins, only calls, only we are training. IRC. Yes, sir. I agree with you, sir, because we are doing, but not an effective uh, lung ventilation, but there is partial ventilation also. Yeah, yeah, not effective. True. Yeah. One more thing, sir. I'm going to do, sir. Sir. Uh, uh, CSF analysis, CSC, no, man, negative established case on dal sinda i case lo. No, sir. CSF analysis is not indicated, sir. If it is think we are thinking of GB, then only that to only to prove the diagnosis, sir. Ah, first of all, initially we were in a dilemma. What type of uh, neuromuscular disorder this is? Either it can no, be. No, in my senior CSF will be normal only, sir. No, in sir. GB sir. only with albuminous albuminocytological dissociation only in GB. That to. 
uh, in a later part of the DC, sir, after a week, yes, in first one week, CSA won't show anything even in GB, sir. Oh. Sir, one more thing, sir, Venkatred, is there? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Actually, yeah, so many actually in the market uh, uh, regarding the immunoglobulins, so many brands are coming. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, uh, Rick, when, when, when coming to the this uh, treatment part, it shows any effectiveness, sir? Because we are not usually in the four or five years back, we used to get good quality of uh, good companies of immunoglobulins. Ah, yes, sir. Now we are resorting to only good brands, sir, like Reliance. Most of the time we give Reliance Mineral. And uh, uh, sometimes we give Intas company Globicell, sir. We have two strengths in this, 5 grams and 10 grams. Yeah, same thing we are in our neurologist also insisted here. So last yes, sir. quality getting... matters, sir. Quality matters. First regarding the allergic reaction, sir. Poor kind of local companies, non-specific companies, we have more of allergic reactions with IVIG, sir. Infusion reactions, which are very rare in IgA deficiency patient, it will happen, but uh, sometimes we can get. Uh, second thing is uh, uh, these uh, hyperosmolar syndromes we get, sir, headaches. See, uh, thrombosis, all those things also we get in uh, poor quality IVIG. But very rare, sir. So we resort to only good company, Reliance or Inta, sir. So far in my career, last 10 years, I have given only these two company IVIG, sir. And you, most sir. of the times, most of the times we give 5 grams and 10 grams depending on the patient pocket. 5 gram vial generally costs uh, 18,000. 10 gram vial cause uh, 20,000, sir. So there will be a huge financial difference. <clears throat> now we are resorting for 10 grams vial. 400 mg per kg per day for five days, sir. So 10 gram vials will uh, do some cost cutting, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. The last uh, the three, two, two, three years uh, before, since last three years, we are using immunoglobulins at 10%. Uh, yes, uh, why? Because, uh, as you mentioned, the cost is less and now it is it has become less than a plasma exchange, sir. The cost. Yeah, yeah plasma do. exchange is uh, cheaper. For one session, we can uh, do it for 20,000. But in, in this patient, we didn't do plasma exchange because he's having bradycardia, dysautonomia kind of picture. Sir, in this case, sort of now, actually, as you mentioned, after this 10 grams has come, sir, 10% has come. Yes, sir. So yes. This, uh, the cost of the immunoglobulin therapy is less than the plasma exchange. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is because true. In the plasma exchange, you have to, when 5% was there, the cost used to be high. So we used to do a plasma action. Now we are going to immunoglobulins because uh, the FFP cost, the, the, the filter and process and everything is going to become more costly. Mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, diaphragm studies, we need to do and establish any further diagnosis. Ah, if we don't have a clue, if the antibodies, if comes negative in this patient, we would have done diaphragmatic fluoroscopy or diaphragmatic EMG studies. Then we think, sir, only isolated uh, why neck muscle weakness and diaphragmatic weakness to establish a variant of GB syndromes like cervico pharyngobrachial variants. We have some GB syndrome variants where limb weakness will not be there. Only they'll have neck muscle weakness or respiratory muscle weakness or some uh, muscular dystrophies uh, where they have only isolated neck muscle and diaphragmatic muscle weaknesses. In those patients, it will be beneficial, sir, but not in this patient, sir. Sir, ultrasound would just coach, sir, patient, okay? Ultrasound of uh, diaphragm. Sati, sir. Uh, that is there, sir, but I want to establish and show evidential diagnosis. Ultrasound is uh, only subject to diagnosis. <laughs> So if I want to present this case somewhere, mm. to have a like a documentary evidence. And that is also major age, sir. Sound good, huh? Answer. And major age, see, you can show now how much is a uh, diaphragmatic contraction. Because any superiority of because previously we have not done much ultrasound, so, so 
ఒకసారి చూద్దాం సార్ షుడ్ బి డూ ఫ్లోరోస్కోపీ ఆర్ అల్ట్రాసౌండ్ ఈజ్ ఇన్ఫ్ ఫర్ సచ్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ పేషెంట్స్ హలో సతీష్ గారు మేడం మార్నింగ్ సతీష్ గారు యు సెట్ దిస్ పేషెంట్ హాడ్ పోస్టరల్ చేంజెస్ అండ్ ఫ్రీక్వెంట్లీ పోస్టరల్ హీ గెట్స్ ఇన్ టు అబ్నార్మల్ పొజిషన్స్ అట్లాంటిది అన్నారు హిస్టరీ వాట్ డిడ్ ఇట్ సే హౌ లాంగ్ హీ హ్యాడ్ దాట్ అండ్ వాట్ వాజ్ దట్ చేంజ్ వాట్ పోస్టరల్ చేంజ్ yes madam no, no, actually madam one minute actually that was he was having a profound neck muscle weakness and he was trying to look uh, sideways that gave us that abnormal bizarre picture of the patients madam it was not actually involuntary movement okay one and the uh, patient is having neck muscle weakness if you if you ask him to look at straight they will try to uh they will try to take the help of the shoulder girding muscles and they'll put that posture typical posture okay. that's that's where uh, it showed as a bizarre involuntary kind of movement but it was all because of the neck muscle weakness and shoulder At girding time, did, he, did they not notice any ptosis uh, you said the later you came to know he had ptosis that time yeah, patient, did he not have any ptosis patient attenders were telling they didn't notice anything two days prior to this they were complaining of only that chest pain probably is having mild uh, uh, exertional dyspnea but they didn't tell anything no diplopia no ptosis no swallowing difficulty no limb weakness they didn't notice anything madam i have seen him in a posture and he was sitting on a bed and the uh, and when i went and asking and talking to him he is not looking at me and is looking sideways and downwards okay i okay. told him to look at me then he is trying to lift his head in a rotatory movement not in the straight lifting the head up he is put lifting his head in a rotatory movement so that he can look at me first thing second thing is i i wanted to check his neuromuscular power give my two fingers and ask him to hold my fingers his muscle power was so tight that my finger got hurt between the uh, rings finger rings it was so powerful his muscle power but his neck is not able to uh, look at me directly and is uh, bringing his head in a rotatory movement so that he can see me in a laterally rotated movement that's what uh, so that movement disorder i thought it is like alcohol withdrawal some uh, psychiatric movement something i thought okay so because he had good uh, muscle power in his hands uh... didn't think of a muscular uh, yes, problems to start yeah. with right okay. in the first cover first day yeah 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 thank you satish garu thank you thank you venkat reddy sir thanks for joining thank you okay thank, thank you venkat reddy garu thank you sir if there no thank you thank you dr venkat reddy garu no questions we you, can sir. conclude the session no questions Have a good day, sir. Box. chat box also no questions please oh, share uh, your slides sir ppt slides sir satish garu sir one comment is there sir sir ha huh? satish sir one comment is there and uh, uh, chat box nice case sir maza aaya ah uh, thank you your <laughs> surendra anta avaro thank you sir surendra surendra uh, surendra is newly joined our dn drnb in uh, medical okay. hospital vishakhapatnam okay, okay sir thank you thanks thanks, thanks venga venkatesh sir bye bye wow bye 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 strong sharing